I logged into my AWS console. So I will go to Amazon EKS service. And here I go to clusters. In the clusters, I'll click on the create cluster. So here we have two options, quick configuration and custom configuration. Let us first look at the quick configuration. So here I have to provide the name of the cluster. Okay, for example, EKS auto mode. Then I need to provide the version. So there are available versions 1.29, 3.0 and 3.1. So I can select the latest version. Next, we need to create a cluster IAM role. So this is a service linked role, which means the Amazon EK service will assume this role. So the reason for this is it has to manage certain AWS resources on our behalf. For example, it has to create a cross account DNIs, okay, to create the cluster and other resources that are required to create the cluster in customer account. Okay, so if you follow this link, it will show you the various options required to create this. So if I go to the IAM role, so this is the AWS service assume role. So this is the auto cluster, which is the principal who is assuming this role. Then these are certain policies required for the service link role. So for example, EKS block storage policy, cluster policy, compute policy and things like that. So remember, we discussed the cluster capabilities of Amazon EKS auto mode. So to provide that capabilities, it requires certain IAM permission. So this is a permission set provided by these policies. Then this is the name Amazon EKS auto cluster role and this is the service eks.amazonaws.com and this is assuming the service and these are the policies. Okay, I'll go ahead and create this IAM role and if I come back to the cluster creation page and I refresh this, I'll be able to see this role. Okay, so this is the first thing we need to keep in mind and remember this cluster IAM role is different for the from the Amazon EKS because Amazon EKS does not require these capabilities. Okay, so that is the difference we need to keep in mind. Next, we need to create a node IAM role. This is a worker node profile, which the worker nodes will assume while joining the cluster and also managing certain access to the AWS services. So let us look at an example of a worker node role. So here, the service which is assuming this role is EKS auto mode node. It's a worker node. Basically, it's a EKS EC2 dot amazonaws.com and the permission that requires is container registry access and the node minimal policy. So it has to pull the images from the registry. So the ECR access required at the same time, some minimal policies are there. So let us look at these policies just to understand what it contains. So it looks at the assume role for the pod identity because pod identity is one of the inbuilt security feature of Amazon EK, so it requires this capability to assume the pod identity role. Okay, so let us proceed further. And the name of the role is Amazon EKS auto node role. And it is assumed by EC2 because worker nodes are EC2. And these are the minimal policies which are managed. So we don't have to create. I'll go ahead and create this role. And if I go here and refresh, I will see this new role. Next, we have to provide the VPC. It's always a good idea to have a dedicated VPC for every EKS cluster. Okay. And within that, we have to create various subnets. Typically, customers create private subnets, public subnets, data plane subnets, and database subnets as well. Okay. Now, in typical Amazon EKS mode, we will create a dedicated control plane subnets with slash 28, which is 16 IPs times three availability zone, which is 48 IPs. These set of IPs are required and reserved only for the control plane. So those are the three subnets we normally provide when you create an Amazon EKS cluster. But for auto mode, instead of creating a control plane subnets dedicatedly, you can create one data plane subnet because these data plane subnet will be used by the worker nodes also. So that means the managed carpenter which is deployed 
as a part of the control plane will also use this subnets that you provide here. For e-case auto mode, I would recommend create worker node subnets with enough IPs for both the control plane and the data plane because the minute carpenter will use the same subnets while creating the worker nodes. Okay, so I'm not creating it now. I will do that in the Terraform automation. I'm just showing you what options we have. Okay. So here we can kind of review. So you can see this is the name of the IAM uh, role for the cluster and this auto mode enable and this is a node role and there are two node pools created automatically. One is the general purpose and there is a system. These are the carpenter node pools managed and automatically created. And uh, the cluster admin access, so it can do the administrative access and the cluster. And the authentication mode is API. We have API and the config map. Both options are available. Secret encryption is not enabled. Upgrade policy is standard. Zonal shift is enabled and networking uh, we discussed and observability also, all the logs are enabled, okay? So let us look at the custom configuration now, what benefits will provide to customize. So here in the custom configuration, I'm selecting this switch auto mode and uh, name of the cluster, the role that we created, the version. So the upgrade policy, I'm going with the default standard mode. Okay, if you want to go for the extended, you can go for extended. That means after 14 months of support, the cluster will enter into the extended mode, which is chargeable. Okay, so this will be for another 12 months. So if you do not want to go for that, just go for the standard mode for now. And uh, the two node pools which are possible is general purpose and system. These are the pre-built node pools. We can create any custom node pools later if you want for different workloads. This is the node I am rolled that we have created and the cluster access. So here we are providing administrative access to the principal that is creating the cluster. Okay, for example, here I've logged in as a user. So this particular user will have an administrative access on the cluster. And I will use eCase API and config map, both modes for testing purpose. If I want to make some changes to config map, I can do that or I can use the eCase access mode uh, completely using the APIs. And I can enable the secret encryption. If I need to do that, I have to provide a key. So I don't have a key for now, so I'll disable it for now. But in the Terraform based uh, automation, I will show you how to create a key and provide that for the secret encryption. Zonal shift is a new feature from the reliability point of view. So I'm disabling that for now and I'll go next. Let us say I provide a name. E case auto mode so in the networking section you can create a dedicated vpc for the eks cluster and create various subnets so one set of subnets is definitely a private subnet which will have ips for the worker nodes and the control plane Parts by default use the same IPs from the worker node subnets, but eKS Automata also supports a enhanced subnet discovery uh, eventually. At the launch, it's not supported, but it will be supported eventually. So you can also use the secondary siders attached to the VPC, and you can host both parts and the worker nodes into the secondary siders. We will discuss that in detail in the networking section, but for now, when you create the cluster, create a private subnets which can have enough IPs for the worker nodes and the parts. Next, security group. I'll go with the default. I'll not create any security group here because automatically one security group will be created and attached to the ENIs that are provisioned in the customer account to create the connection between the control plane and the data plane. You can choose the family for the IP address. So IPv4, IPv6, I'll go with IPv4 for now. Cluster endpoint. You have three options. You can go with the complete public access. That means you can access the API server endpoint through internet, or you can use the public and private. That means you have access from internet as well as from the worker nodes within the VPC. 
and the private is completely through VPC itself. So I'll go with the public and private for now and I'll leave all the default settings for the advanced settings. So metrics, you can have the managed Prometheus configuration. So you can send the metrics to AMP, which is the Amazon managed Prometheus. So I'll not select this for now. Logging also I'll not select. Okay. So you can also add some add-ons into the cluster. Okay. So for example, you can use CloudWatch, uh, GoDuty Runtime, and node monitoring. So if you see the CloudWatch observability, it is supported, but it is not supporting the pod identity. So you can still deploy this as a managed add-on, EKS add-on using the IRAC feature. So that's why it is not um, selectable. So it is grayed out. So whereas the node monitoring I can select, okay. And I can also select the GoDuty monitoring. Both of them are supported. You can see the compatibility metrics. So it's supported on EKS and EC2, auto mode and if we see uh, forget also you will see sometimes you will also see the hybrid nodes all the options for the compatibility will be mentioned you can also select the additional add-ons okay so remember the ek sort mode provides the cluster capabilities for the compute storage the networking and security apart from that if you want to add additional add-ons you can deploy them as a ek add-ons or self-managed add-ons or from the marketplace so all these options are available So next, you can just select a version for the add-on that you selected. Okay, for the node monitoring, it is so and so version. And for the GoDuty monitoring also, you have the compatible versions available. So this is how you will get the customized version. So this is the cluster configuration, zonal shift to be disabled, networking, VPC and subnet, observability also we have not selected much, add-ons we have selected few. and uh, the versions basically okay so if i go and click on this create it will create the cluster in 10 to 15 minutes okay now i'll not select this now instead what i will do is i'll show you how to create this through terraform automation okay but this will give you an idea of how easy it is to select the configuration and create the clusters automatically through the console 